Hey, what's up, everybody? Decided to take my trip to Havasu today instead of waiting until the end of the month, man. And unlike Bullhead, I scored big time. Got three really cool items to show you guys. No video games or anything, but one of the items is video game related. And also movie related is in memorabilia and freaking wicked cool. And then the other two items, I'm going to say vintage, man. One of them, I'm still trying to date it, but I know it's got some age to it. I don't think it's one that's new made. Anyways, all the stuff I found at pawn shops, I hit all the thrift stores, and they did have video game stuff, but it was all things I had already, and a lot of it too looked like it was pretty beat up, so I just passed on all of it. Anyways, this first item here is from World War II. This is a U.S. Navy knife here, folding knife, survival type. Made by Colonial Providence, Rhode Island. Just is stamped Colonial Prov R.I. And liner lock, which <laughs> easy to get open. You gotta push like a son of a bitch with your thumb to get it closed. It's really tight. Really friggin' tight. I'm sure the old dude that brought this in sliced himself quite a few times. Anyways, it's also got a saw. And the saw really is the only thing that I got to clean up with some WD-40. It looks like it was used to cut branches or whatever, and then they never cleaned it. So it's just kind of just a light coat of rust that should come off. Or it could be, actually, that might be dried up oil. <laughs> Hard to tell. But, uh, I've seen some online for sale. I paid 30 for this at Wimpy's Pond. And uh, on this pawn shop, it's in kind of a strip mall area where it's pawn shops, tattoo parlor, restaurant, a few other places. But it's like Wimpy's Pawn. Then you go a little bit further where I got the next badass item. That's Pawn Star. And then you got the Hospice of Havasu Thrift Store. And it's just before you turn off for London Bridge. So anyways, I've been seeing some online in about the same range, 30 bucks but not near as good a condition. The old guy took care of this. So he said, the guy that brought it in, he said, this is the knife that I used to carry around with me. I got a lot of stuff that I saved. He was an old World War II vet. So he said, no loss. And I think the guy got it for cheap and <laughs> got some other stuff from the dude. And he said, this guy brought in some nice things. I kept everything else for my personal collection. So that was the only thing he had from this guy in the pawn shop. So lucky to get it. And this next item, if you gamers don't recognize this, you're freaking dead. <laughs> you should have at least played the freaking game or watched the movie to see her big titties bounce as she fights, man. One of those freaking tough girl type flicks in video games. For 20 bucks at Pawn Star, got a Blood Rain sword. And this is fucking badass. It's not real heavy duty made, it is pretty thin on the metal as it's got some flex, but whoever had this just had it displayed. No nicks, not been beat up or anything, and it's sharp. It's got one hell of an edge on it. I'm figuring this is Pakistan made or whatever, which cool enough. And the handle here, wrapped in leather. This is leather, but pretty thin leather, and then they got Velcro on it so you can strap it to your arm and run around Walmart on a Vicodin binge and take down Fluffies. Or, uh, the Fluffies aren't powerful enough, man, to take down with this, man. You got those, uh, mobile lard ass infantry units. Just look for the smoke and screaming children. Just wicked freaking badass, man. I love the fact that they tried to give it just that wicked shape to the blade that is from the video game. The only thing that would have been cool is if they would have made it like the ones from the original video games, where it's elongated back here with another knife at the end of it, or blade or whatever. 
this is kind of a mix between the game and the movie, but cool enough. And I don't know if I'd want a thicker steel blade on it. It's just about right, man. Any more heft, and you'd be straining. I haven't measured the blade on it, man, but it is freaking huge. Killer find for 20 bucks. After today, man, all I can say is if you go to have a suit to hit the pawn shops and stuff, man, at least have $100 on you. Every time I go down there, I, I do hit a lot of places, but I always score. This time it was just freaking killer. I'm pretty much down to the change in my pocket because this next item, man, I just said, this is what I got on me. Will you take it? And he went for it. Got another handmade Japanese katana, and this one is just absolutely beautiful. Not going to clean it up and polish it to where it takes away from the, the patina. The only cleaning I need to do is all this and everything is brass. I got to go over it just really lightly with some cream for finishing on brass or copper or whatever and take off the uh, oxidation or whatever you know with brass or whatever if it's around a place that's got moisture it will start to turn that kind of white green blue it's just starting to do that so that is just lift right off without hurting the patina otherwise man all this there isn't a spot <laughs> on the metal here that doesn't have some kind of carving and this one little button right there that you push and that releases a catch so you can take it out of the scabbard as it does lock in place even that on the very end of it and I'll show a close-up it's got a little blossom carved in the end of it and that's all the designs blossoms and leaves and whatnot I'll paint it up scabbard here looks like they did wood on the inside just to keep the blade from wobbling too much or getting scratched up bad and then metal to the outside before they put on the leather sleeve here and this is nice thick bridal leather do got to put some conditioner on it this little belt loop here is starting to get stiff just from age and then that's brass other than all the nice carving and stuff in the condition which sold me on this it's got a Damascus blade real Damascus I checked man I first thing I did when I got home was take the handle off this puppy to look at the tang to see if it had anything stamped into it it does I'm still hunting around for the right website to where I can see the freaking symbols instead of just a little picture but I'm trying to figure out what it says in Japanese. It's got some symbols on it. And then it's got like a circle or something that may be a trademark type symbol for the maker or whatever. And that's all on the tang. Oh, and this piece here matches the handguard and everything. It's all carved nice too with uh, blossoms and leaves and whatnot. And all the leaves are painted gold. That's nice. I can scratch off the oxidation with my fingernail, so that'll clean up really good. I should be able to get it towards just the patina showing through. That's this piece here. Probably just moisture or whatever, but you can see those streaks on it. That's just oxidation that'll come right off. Nice straight blade. No bad nicks or scratches. Does have just a few tiny little specks of rust here and there they really aren't all that bad that might come off if I went over this with a traditional cleaning kit or whatever 
and try and give it a nice polish. So it really needs to be repolished, man. I think this thing all shined up just looked absolutely beautiful. So do here is see if I can balance it here for you guys without knocking a bunch of shit over. Hopefully it will stay. And I'll show you guys a close-up of all the detail. Remind me if I don't know the parts. I've got a chart somewhere that I printed out that shows one of these broke down and describes each thing. So I may be off on some of it, but uh... Does such an awesome job on focusing. Yeah. Hold it with both hands. That's what she said. Anyways, all carved and painted. That's all carved and painted, real pretty. Now that it's not going to focus again. And, uh, I don't know if this is ray skin off the belly, all that bumpy stuff there. Or stingray belly or what or maybe it's some of them the handles are wrapped like cord wrapped in ray skin I don't know I gotta look that up but that is real that was really obvious once I took it apart because the cord stops there so that piece at this end where it ends there that comes off and the ray skins kind of sticking out so you could tell it wasn't fake and it's got rice paper under it to stuck this in a box for a while with some that popcorn crap. I gotta clean all that out of there. I think these are called kanji. It's got one there and then it's got the one on the other side. This is where it just gets beautiful. All carved. And this one <laughs> those flat pieces like discs or whatever that go in between the handle and the guard it's got three there and let's see two of them on the other side they're all carved around the outside the very bottom one here is carved to kind of match the carvings on the cross guard now that it's going to be a pain on light here let's see if I can get this there that looks better all those flowers are painted. Does have a number etched into it, like a serial number. As you can see, it's been done by hand. Which uh, I know if it's stamped in there, that's not exactly a good thing. I'm telling you that it's authentic. I'm guessing that maybe whoever was selling this or whatever obviously had multiple ones so they did that for identification I don't know but I say it does have Japanese symbols on the tang and then this blade can we say fucking awesome I say just a few little spots of rust here and there that I think will come off This thing was got to focus. Just friggin' awesome, man. <laughs> For a hundred and two bucks, authentic or not, man, this thing is fucking badass. I wish I could have gotten some of the other ones while I was there. But to me, on looks, this one looked the nicest. He had one of the military ones, and that one he had priced, I think, at 450 which, if you go online, you can find them cheaper than that. And I'm talking the military ones that were used in service for World War II or whatever, to where the entire handle is metal, instead of the cord wrapping like this. So I'm hoping this is pre-World War II at least, maybe World War I era or older than that. But not ancient but uh sometimes it will just 
have fancy stuff stamped into the metal or to be kind of plain looking and then painted olive green. He had one like that to where it had some of the paint but most of it had come off just from age. But nowhere near as fancy as this. Had another one to where wood scabbard that had it painted up really nice but some of it was flaking off and it just wasn't taken very good care of that one I think that was the same price originally as this so this one he originally wanted 125 so I think that one was 125 because the guy he, he didn't know the value of them other than the one was military and I think that's the only one he looked up then there was another one wood scabbard and it had the tips like this this part here was a carved dragon's head and then the other end of the scabbard dragon's head and then just black scabbard and then all this looked like it was wrapped in he, he thought it was shark skin and it felt like shark skin that one I think he wanted 150 so I was saying man he seems to like cash and it wasn't the old guy that owns the place that knocked the price down man the Asian dude that works there and kind of the, the typical one that's in his 30s or whatever that grew up here doesn't speak a, speak a lick of Japanese man he was really cool and he was digging the things because he never got a chance to look at them so he's saying it's like if you don't get one of these I'll take one home because they are wicked cool he's the one that just Say, well, what, what would you give for it if you can't afford the 125? And so, oh, I got this much on me. So he just asked the guy and said, is that cash or credit? And when I said cash, he got all happy. A lot of times, man, at these places, you can't negotiate. But if it's credit card, man, they're not getting the money right away. So they're usually not going to make a deal with you. same man just awesome friggin detail and that <laughs> the video is making it look big but there's my fingernail here there's my pinky fingernail it's smaller than that and that is carved really nice and the way they did it just a hole there that is a separate piece it's attached to that and then there's once you put the handle on, there's a leaf spring on it that is against the tang, so you can press on that. So, don't want to make this fit too long. Hope you guys enjoyed it, man. I'm a very happy guy. I will definitely be taking a trip back there as soon as I can. So you can find deals like this, man. That's worth taking a trip and spending the money on gasoline. That was one of my reasons why I decided to go today. Can't blame the president on this one because it's been happening all freaking 13 years that I have lived here in Kingman. Summertime, they lower the prices to give people a break because everybody's out. As soon as winter hits, man, damn gas prices start going up big time. And it's probably not too bad compared to some of you other guys that live in the big city. I think the cheapest price here was like... 354 a gallon at Smith's every place else is more some places it's getting close to four dollars so yeah it'd be cooler but I didn't want to waste a bunch of money on gasoline man to go down there and not come back with anything so I will catch you guys later have a good one everybody